last week we were seeing the stone age that we also call as prehistoric period when we call some period is called prehistoric there is some other time called historic if you call historic time period but in our history no transition is sudden always it's evolutionary in nature in between we call proto history online students whatever i am writing is it audible is it visible clearly audible uh, visible prehistoric period proto historic period and historic period there was a question in previous year chalcolithic time period we considered as proto historic period in upsc language how in medieval india and middle india or central india and south india chalcolithic cultures created conditions for emergence of prehistory to proto history so what are these characteristics of proto history unless we know what are the characteristics of historic period then only we can assess what is prehistory what is proto history so let us see these things the main criteria for categorizing a particular period as historic means a written record if we study our human history through written records then we consider it as historic period if we are studying through hist written records means there is a script after the development of script we considered as historic period but when it comes to this prehistory this is no script no script at all and this is the transition like when it comes to this period some kind of script or evolution of script this will fully evolve into the script which we can read properly and we can categorize this particular time period as historic time period when it comes to paleolithic mesolithic neolithic we did not identify any kind of script when it comes to chalcolithic time period in certain areas we have a script but we are not able to read it properly because of this we consider that part as proto history even in our subcontinent a special case is harappan civilization also we consider as proto history today we will see that which part is under proto history this is the major criteria in categorizing historic period and it is not the only major criteria which consider the characteristics of historic period there are other things that is metal usage metal technology it is fully utilized here no metal and here again evolution of usage of metal
and those chalcolithic periods which do not have this evidence but this have this evidence so that's why there are some criteria characteristics which define prehistory protohistory and historic period so this is what exactly upsc expected in that year in 2017 there was a question chalcolithic periods it helped to emerge from prehistory to protohistory but that did not fully evolve into historic period now these are one characteristics second one next one when we discussed about uh, syllabus we have seen different uh, society elements political elements and uh, economic elements those are the various institutions that developed over a period of time throughout our history these socio economic political characteristics fully evolved in the historic period but they did not evolve fully in the proto history and when it comes to prehistory they are just beginning so in that way the institutions if i write in simple term social institutions society not at all full societal elements now this is emergence it's like family system properly evolving social hierarchies these are the division of uh, labor all these aspects fully evolved in the historic period but when it comes to society in prehistory in stone age what kind of society we have seen band few people and they move from one place to the other place that society did not evolve but when it comes to chalcolithic period we have villages that's why they are about to become full societal elements next one no economic institutions these economic institutions fully evolved when it comes to in general studies it is simple characteristic which one if we have any written script then we consider it as a historic period if we don't have written script that is prehistory and we are able to we find script but we are not able to decipher that is protohistory when it comes to general studies we limit ourselves to this part but as a history optional student you should go beyond that these are the characteristic you need to see this and here emergence economic institutions means like agriculture artisans trade you will find these institution just beginning and they are going to become fully evolved in this time period Uh, no major one because in again our subcontinent is very big one that's why you will see some places in the historic period some place in the prehistory proto history some place still you will be in the prehistoric period others are once script is there once metal started using automatically society will evolve into because the kind of agriculture production will change the kind of artisan activities once you use metal the impact of the metal usage is going to alter the societal elements you will find various artisan activities with stone also with metal also 
terracotta images, various images can be, various artisan activities are going to become very common. Now, whatever, how you are going to write in the exam, that format I will give. You give this. Prehistoric, protohistoric, historic. So first you give the heading aspect is time frame. Sanjo, you make a table like this. Now here, different aspects will come, dimensions, and characteristics in different time periods. So that this table will give you the answer. First one, time frame. In prehistory, you write, before the advent of written records. Before the advent of written records. Then this is after emergence of written records. That's why Vedic time period we consider as historic period, because we study about Vedic period from Vedas. Vedas are literary evidence. We study about that particular time period from that. And this is transition period. That's why the question which you asked, if Harappan script is completely deciphered, then our historic time period is going to be shifted at least 2,000 years earlier. That is going to be a very, already the discovery in 1921 itself is a major revolutionary. But if we really script, if we really discover it, invent that, decipher it, our historic period in the Indian context itself will move towards 2,000 years earlier. Suppose if it is 1,500 onwards, we are saying, now it goes, from 2,500 years onwards. Next. How we decide the chronology? Chronology means we are saying first Vedic time period comes, then Mahajanapadas, then Mauryans, then how we are doing that? It is depending on the written records chronological order. I will give the statement. Determined through, uh, you give in this, so that these two things are other things. Determined through Determined through written records and historical chronicles. Determined through, you write here. Determined through historical chronicles. When it comes to chronology, lack of precise dating. Lack of precise dating. And we can identify only through archaeology. Determined through archaeology. You write full sentence so that you can use in the answer itself. Determined through archaeology. Mind 
mind through archaeology. And now you see, when it comes to sources, our first chapter in our history syllabus is sources. The first source, archaeological sources and literary sources. Unless you use both sources, our human evolution we cannot understand fully. Otherwise, we know only about this part, but we will not know about this part. And in fact, do you know, this part covers of entire human history, 99%. In our human evolution, historic period is only maximum 2,000 years, 3,000 years. But how many years onwards our human evolution is happening? That's why if we completely rely on only written records, we will know only about 1% of the human behavior or human evolution. To understand the remaining part of our human evolution, we have to depend on archaeology. Because there is no other way of understanding these people except through archaeology. So this shows the importance of archaeology at the same time, literary sources. Next one. Third category. Writing system. We will give some examples here. Determined through, okay, proto history, transition from prehistoric to historic, simply. Here it will come transition. Okay, now writing systems. Writing systems. Here you give examples. Presence of systems like Brahmi, Karosti. Presence of scripts like Brahmi script, Karosti, Aramaic. Gradually, we will see in poor, after Mauryan time period, we will have these scripts in our Indian context. Here, absence of any script. Absence of any writing system. Early stage of writing system. Early stage of writing system. When it comes to writing system, we generally understand the modern way of writing. Today, today we have in English language alphabets, similarly in local language, Hindi, any other language, we have alphabets. That is the way of understanding the language. But we really don't know, in Chalcolithic period, probably they might have used some kind of symbols. When it comes to pottery, on the pottery, you will have some kind of symbols. We really don't know whether that was a script, some kind of meaning to convey to the others, or it's simply an image. That's why the early stage of writing, archaeology helps in this regard. This is the beginning stage of early writing, and that gradually entered into the modern form of writings. Next. Sources of information. Sources of information. You write like written records, inscriptions. inscriptions, epigraphs, coins. 
numismatics on the writings on the numismatics when it comes to here archaeological sources archaeological sources like cave paintings stone tools archaeological sources and when it comes to this dominated by this only archaeological archaeological sources plus plus if we can understand no name because we are not able to decipher no name is given like brahmi karosti ha huh. but in case of harappan script we don't know name also simply we are calling harappan script simple booster fit and that's why just it is our interpretation only like they are writing from common symbols suppose this one whenever you write p and r you are starting from this to that and similarly when it comes to harappan script the common symbols they are going in this way and again similar kind of symbols they are coming from that side to this side so depending on that probably they are writing this to this suppose whatever is available here 1 2 and it is coming 1 and 2 so that's why from this side to this side likewise next one subsistence pattern subsistence pattern here you know hunting and gathering hunting plus gathering when it comes to here various subsistence patterns like agriculture domestication trade industrial activities all the modern form of subsistence patterns evolving so simply we consider this sedentary sedentary life and this is mobile moving from one place to the other place in search of food and in proto history means its combination for some time mobile for some time sedentary emergence of 
sedentary life. Chalcolithic cultures gives this evidence. That gives the evidence of agriculture, domestication, starting point of trading activities, starting point of uh, industrial activities, village setup, so those things. Next, technological level. Technology. When it comes to here, stone technology. Stone technology. Here, metal workings. Copper. Iron. Iron also started. Copper. And this combination, copper mixing with the tin. Bronze. That's why Harappa is having all the characteristics which we consider historic period. But only because of un not able to understand the script, we were forced to put in the pre proto historic category. It will go to 2500 years back. Yeah. Uh, but what is the time period of Mesopotamian script? Already, that script was already deciphered. Sumerian script was already deciphered. So I do not know exactly the beginning of the time period. But if it is after our Indus script, then ours becomes the oldest. Yeah, oldest. So only missing link is script only when it comes to Harappa. But all these traditions, now you see, even they moved beyond this sedentary life. They lived in urban areas. Urban areas is in fact a modern way of life. So these are all in village also we will find these elements. But constructing, living in urban areas is completely advanced. That's why they have all the characteristics of historic period, but only because of script. Because unless we decipher it, we cannot put it in this category. Emergence of sedentary life, stone. This is beginning of usage of beginning of usage of metal. The first metal used by human beings is copper. Next one. Sanju, have you written up to here? Can you speak? Are you able to? Then, political system. Next dimension, political structure. When it comes to historic period, we have advanced, you write this point, emergence of kingdoms in historic period. In historic period, emergence of kingdoms, comma, empires, and dynastic rules, This emerged. This is a historic period. 
and here this is beginning beginning of political system here absence of anything hardly people will stay in one place it's very difficult to emerge political system people will keep on moving from one place to the other place if we take the social system how we can define when it comes to historic period in the indian context we have varna system then caste system jati system those things how we write stratified social hierarchies stratified stratified social hierarchies and this one this is completely egalitarian people are living in few band society band society are egalitarian band society egalitarian society emergence of complex social system just beginning that is going to be fully evolved in historic period social systems then religion religious beliefs and here to write in historic period detailed religious texts detailed religious texts scriptures mythologies all these things emerged because you can see this is sedentary life once people get sufficient resources then people have time to think about some other religious beliefs new ideas out of those new thinking new ideas these institutions also emerge next when it comes to this when it comes to religious beliefs we don't know really what the religious beliefs you write in this one in the middle transition towards religious beliefs and here only we don't know whether it is religious or not also what is the source of religious beliefs when it comes to paleolithic and mesolithic drawings of the cave paintings yes so only we can come to know about their religious beliefs from the archaeological sources like paintings 
on caves when it comes to here we have texts religious texts are there but there are no such texts here only cave paintings and here transition towards religious beliefs in the form of burials pottery images terracotta images seals yes so those things emerging now you see when it comes to chalcolithic period in india all these institutions are emerging but again detailed religious text do we have no that's why we cannot consider it as this and was there any emergence of kingdoms no that's why chalcolithic we cannot consider as historic stratified social hierarchies we do not know exactly but only depending on the burial practices only those things only basic things that's why not completely emerged social system we don't understand and these institutions not in the full scale of evol evolution they are just beginning that's why chalcolithic period we cannot consider as historic period at the same time it cannot be considered as prehistoric period also because prehistoric is very beginning stage they crossed that prehistoric people are mobile in nature they are subsistence for food itself very difficult but when it comes to chalcolithic period sedentary life village life agriculture artisan activities copper also they used but we don't know about these people from the written records because of that we cannot consider it as this page also we cannot consider this period also that's why this no metal so now script also not there metal also not there fully it is a prehistoric period these are all after the emergence of metal after the emergence these evolutions emerged because of the technological changes that's why if you see industrial revolution up to industrial revolution one kind of society but post industrial revolution completely transformed and nowadays we are talking about new technology like artificial intelligence it is going to alter completely the way human beings are going to live that's how the emergence of metal itself is a revolutionary in the sense that's why these are all the consequences consequences of the emergence of new technology and new ideas this is how you have to see when it comes to history now history is nothing but how these dimensions are evolving from period to period how these dimensions are there in neolithic period how are there in mesolithic how are there in chalcolithic how are there in vedic and time period onwards before entering into chalcolithic we are going to have one more table like this 
for comparison. evolution of human history here we will write very small words only so that you will have better idea about these things lower paleolithic middle paleolithic upper paleolithic or you can do one thing you draw one table for paleolithic only because this will help and from the next table mesolithic like that we will write mesolithic neolithic chalcolithic later sanju you make table like this lower paleolithic middle paleolithic upper paleolithic first one timeline timeline six lakh to one lakh fifty thousand six lakh to 1 lakh 50000 now you see this lower paleolithic it is also the evolution of human beings from homo erectus to homo sapiens stage also around 3 lakh time period homo sapiens emerged so biologically also human beings were evolving and in middle paleolithic 1 lakh 50000 to 35,000 upper paleolithic 35,000 to 10,000 homo sapiens sapiens modern man 
yes we evolved at this stage so whatever the human that's why whatever human history through literary means it is talking about our species the modern form of the 10000 and before that a different kind of biologically we were all evol evolving up to this time period we call paleolithic age who human beings were living at this stage also but they were following a different kind of life pattern and next one during this time period now you see when it comes to climate also very cold one very cold so you can say like very cold climate cold climate just temperature increased little bit warmer but not very warm and not like mesolithic after 10000 bc completely changed temperatures increase little bit little warmer that's why if you see bimbetka caves and bimbetka paintings actually they belong to upper paleolithic stage they were not belong to lower or middle paleolithic whatever bimbetka and mesolithic the bimbetka adamgar caves painting survived from upper paleolithic to the mesolithic time period because at this time they got some kind of comfort and they could at least considering at this stage these people are climatic wise better conditions for the sustainable climate next one technology under these circumstances what kind of technology or tools they used for the survival this we call core tools large tools stone tools like hand axe in lower paleolithic core lodge then in the middle paleolithic they started breaking them they started breaking this we call flake tools flake tools and when it comes to this time period blades burins burin burin means like a screw driver screwdriver kind of for a boring purpose for drilling for drilling boring with a stone only everything with a sto stone tools only these are all blades means two sides sharpened for cutting burins is for digging purpose yes this is burin huh. blades burins and sometimes scrapers also scrapers so these people are living under these environment conditions and naturally whatever is available to them they were using and what is the lifestyle subsistence hunting and gathering only everywhere here somewhat more difficult because very cold area and even animals are also evolving not only human beings even animals are also evolving 
hunting and gathering hunting and gathering hunting and gathering they were using these two tools so you keep to imagine under these environmental conditions the kind of plants the kind of animals which they live during this time period also change and they have to depend on only that kind of food and plants and animals change here accordingly their food pattern changed animals and plants changed here accordingly their food pattern also changed after 10000 bc during mesolithic and neolithic time period warmer climate more food grains that's why agriculture became the dominant profession subsistence houses now you see under these circumstances very cold climate now only they have to depend on the naturally available caves caves the tradition continued caves and rock shelters same thing caves and rock shelters because they don't know how to make their own home also and in fact the climate also not conducive enough they had to depend on houses and when it comes to society band society few people because they have to always hunting mode they keep on hunting from one place to the other place group of 20 people 30 people they keep on moving band society band society band society and when it comes to religion they might be having some kind of religious beliefs because we can understand only through the paintings on the walls like probably animals and plants animal plants might be same animals and plants now you can see that tradition even today also continuing religion the final point art art the artistic expression their feelings they expressed in the form of paintings on caves when it comes to indian subcontinent our bimbetka context is paintings on caves in upper paleolithic example and whatever they did might not be survived we don't know this how now you see for everything whatever may be the question whatever may be the time period these dimensions are going to be common you take vedic time period timeline their conditions 
technology, subsistence, then houses, society, religion, and art. Our questions also, same thing. So it can be asked about art of Gupta time period, religion of Vedic time period, subsistence pattern of Neolithic people. So these are same dimensions throughout our history. Now you write Mesolithic, Neolithic, Chalcolithic. Next table. Sanju, we are going to draw another table. This is we have compared lower, middle, upper Paleolithic. In next table, we are going to see Mesolithic, Neolithic, and Chalcolithic. Mesolithic, Neolithic, Chalcolithic. Timeline. In our Indian context, 9000 to 4000 BC. When it comes to Neolithic, 7000 to 1000 BC. And here, Chalcolithic, we do not have any specific reference like we have, say, third millennium. third millennium BC to it continued till 700 BC. Mesolithic, Neolithic, Chalcolithic. Now you see how our history is transforming. Subsistence. Climate is almost the same climate, warmer climate. warm climate. This entire Paleolithic stage, we also can use the term Pleistocene age. Pleistocene, that is ice age. That continued. This ice age changed. That's why climate change took place in this stage of human life. The climate change, this has transformed the way people live completely. And once again, we are talking about climate change now in the 21st century. Warm climate, climate change, warmer. Now it continues, warmer. Now, today we are in a condition talking about a global warming also. It is increasing beyond certain level which we cannot withstand. Climate is continuously changing, becoming warmer. As a result, animals also will change, plants also will change. Subsistence. Hunting, gathering. Are you right here? Beginning beginning of domestication, domestication of you right both of plants and animals. 
domestication of plants means gradually it led to the evolution of agriculture domestication of animals gradually evolved into the kind of animal husbandry fishing hunting and gathering continues and you see even today also whatever their subsistence pattern continuing even today also only new uh, subsistence pattern will increase but the old system continues hunting gathering today also going fishing today also going animal domestication going on agriculture going on new services new industries are emerging but whatever old practices are still continuing in different parts of india subsistence next technology with what technology they continued these professions neolithic cha okay agriculture agriculture domestication of animals domestication of animals when it comes to agriculture they practice like wheat barley rice they produced in neolithic itself they produced and these things are going to become even more stronger in chalcolithic so here you give like agriculture domestication in addition to that so much artisan activities artisan activities based on stone based on metal so many artisan activities emerged subsistence pattern and you can write trade also even in historic period also these are the same similar kind of subsistence patterns technology when it comes to mesolithic microliths small stone tools for their subsistence pattern they utilized microliths stone tools in neolithic also stone tools but they are polished polished stone tools one example is celt celt it's like polished hand axe it can be used for agriculture purpose and in some places we identified even bone tools also stone tools polished tools example celt <coughs> bone tools and when it comes to here in chalcolithic 
stone tools continued copper copper technology and low grade in some places low grade bronze also in some places low grade iron also but copper is the dominant one technology sanju written up to here you can type in the chat box have you hello sanju can you speak have you written up to here okay fine society so this is when it comes to mesolithic this is the combination of paleolithic and meso neolithic Mesolithic is the Middle Age. Dominant characteristics of Paleolithic also, some characteristics of Neolithic also are visible. So here, band society, plus. beginning of settled life and here in neolithic villages settled life once agriculture comes people have to stay in that particular place villages settled life in chalcolithic also this tradition continues villages settled life in some places even we identify social hierarchies we come to know about these social hierarchies by based on the burial practices example burial practices now they are going to deepen burial practices and we we find mother goddess terracotta images also in chalcolithic time period that shows the importance of women so definitely some kind of gender division social hierarchy social division those systems are emerging at this time because for vedic time period onwards we have some written records we can read what was the exact condition of women society but when it comes to chalcolithic neolithic only through archaeological evidence we have to identify it becomes difficult to identify exactly religion religion same plant and animal worship
प्लांट एंड एनिमल वर्शिप मदर गॉडेस सेम and you see and next stages same these systems will continue last one art केव पेंटिंग्स केव पेंटिंग्स बिम्बेट का एडमगढ़ एंड इन न्योलिथिक चाल को लेते एक पेंटिंग्स बट ऑन पॉटरी एमर्ज pottery designs pottery designs in some of the places now you see when it comes to neolithic and chalcolithic you will not see much difference only more people population is going to increase in paleolithic less population mesolithic population little bit increased neolithic some more people chalcolithic some more people only more population more villages more number of uh, activities subsistence pattern activities if you take uh, in south india in the same time neolithic and chalcolithic started emerged that's why some sites we call neolithic hyphen chalcolithic sites because that time from mesolithic time period onwards once after crossing mesolithic people entered into polished stone tools but at the same time they also started using copper also that's why we consider both as neolithic and chalcolithic all right this about paleolithic mesolithic neolithic and chalcolithic now we need to draw three images one for paleolithic india map mesolithic india map neolithic and chalcolithic four images we will draw so that you will see how in indian subcontinent people settlements are increasing over a period of time four india maps you draw you give the space to draw four india maps one for paleolithic one for mesolithic one for neo one for chalco Sanju I am going to draw India map you follow me we are going to draw four India maps Paleolithic settlements under this
पैलियोलिथिक then mesolithic just you give in this area this area this area when it comes to mesolithic major dominant settlements in bilan valley here sohan valley narmada valley tungabhadra valley Belan Valley You see our human evolution human beings are continuously migrating africa it is the mother continent of all the human race from there they migrated and they are going to come to this part initially that's why for example wheat wheat produced before north western part it was produced in the west asia but when it comes to rice now you see these areas are desert areas it is not conducive for the rice growth rice requires alluvial soil and also a lot of water you will find once they come to gangetic valley rice cultivation becomes very dominant even though wheat barley cotton they produced in this area before in the other parts but rice in india for the first time they are going to produce in belan valley only this is how from paleolithic old paleolithic lower middle upper paleolithic continuously settlements are moving towards in other directions belan valley mesolithic settlements now neolithic now you will see more and more number of settlements
Do you see? Paleolithic few settlements. In Mesolithic, and you need to observe whatever settlements are continuing here. Gradually, these people are going to stay, and they are going to become dominant by Neolithic time period. Already in Paleolithic, Stohan Valley, Tungabhadra. Already in Paleolithic time period onwards, we see the evidence of human. and gradually they are going to settle and now these people are moving towards northeastern areas also and if you take this is 7000 bc and this is 3000 bc 1000 bc 2500 bc Two thousand BC, but you give this here five thousand BC. Five thousand. This is before ten thousand. Before ten thousand BC itself, human. settlements were there in india around 5000 bc also those settlements are continuing when it comes to chalcolithic now from 2500 2100 bc onwards it continues till 700 bc चाल को देख वी आर सपरेटिंग हरप्पन सिविलाइजेशन लेटर बट इन फैक्ट हाउ यू सी दिस हरप्पन सिविलाइजेशन इज नॉट ए सडन इवेंट पैलियोलिथिक ऑल्सो पैलियोलिथिक स्टेज ऑल्सो सम सेटलमेंट्स वर दे सोहन वैली एंड दट लिटिल बिट कंटिन्यूस इन मेसोलिथिक बाय नियोलिथिक टाइम पीरियड more and more settlements and these people are going to adopt copper also and once they adopt the copper then gradually urban civilization also emerged so it's a gradual evolution in our question how harappan civilizations emerged emerged means there were different theories because these were discovered during the colonial time period they were always seeing through the prism of colony we were always treated as if we don't have any civilization whatever civilization elements came to india those were those were always the gift of outsiders not the indigenous people development that's why even indus valley civilization also multiple theories emerged it was not a indigenously developed one but someone came from west asia and suddenly they started urban areas these people brought the technology these people brought the elements and then emerged suddenly our question also like that indus urban areas did not emerge suddenly it is a gradual process answer to that question is now you see your answer is going to start from paleolithic itself for general study students it is very difficult area but for optional student it is very compulsory part we cannot start from indus valley civilization because before indus valley itself so much development already took place that is the climax of the development indus valley civilization but here these chalcolithic settlements dominated in ahar gilund balatal malwa
Jorvi. These areas in this area also. Like Chirant, Andurajar DB, these things. Now you see this one. This Neolithic. These Neolithic, the moment they adopted stone technology, polished stone, they started taking copper also. That's why these continues. They are also called Neolithic Chalcolithic period. This is Jorvi, and here we call Neolithic. Chalcolithic. Neolithic Chalcolithic. And here, Karnataka region, Karnataka Andhra. In that way, actually, there is no single description. South Indian, Chalcolithic, Neolithic. Malwa we call Central. Jorvi we call Deccan and below that South India. And when it comes to this, Eastern India. This is Western part. And you give special case before the emergence of mature Harappan, early Harappan sites. These early Harappan sites are nothing but some Neolithic, some Chalcolithic. These Neolithic Chalcolithic settlements emerged into urban form, mature form. Those became mature Harappan site. In our map pointing also, one category is there. UPSC gives one point and say early Harappan site. Now you give this. You can give only this much, in the northwestern part. early Harappans. These are nothing but Neo plus Chalcolithic. <coughs> and you give one more so that you will have better idea. Late Harappan. In between there is mature Harappan. We will study deeply. Late Harappan, whatever these urban elements, they are again, their culture is going to spread. And these elements are going to stay late here also, here also, here also, here also, here also. They are going to spread. Ten thirty. Ah, here. Late Harappan. Early Harappan, late Harappan. Now you see, Harappans are sandwiched between these. 
and some of these late her these chalcolithic settlements are post harappan so that's why when it comes to chalcolithic settlement you cannot because of the emergence of indus valley civilization that confusion emerged now you give timeline paleolithic after paleolithic mesolithic comes after that neolithic after neolithic chalcolithic after chalco harappan now you see after harappan once again we get chalcolithic Ah, there are multiple theories. Mostly accepted theory is ecological degradation. Only in this part, Harappan civilization emerged. This part, Harappan civilization emerged. It continued for nearly thousand of year, thousand years. Seven hundred to eight hundred years, it flourished. Urban civilization. But this area was over exploited. Indus River. Today, this area is desert area, Balochistan area. But at that time, it was not that arid. It was semi-arid. It was also arid. That time also semi-arid. So many rivers were there. They exploited these rivers, and they did not change the technology. Also, and gradually the fertility of soil decreased, and some natural ecological degradation. some floods took place sometime droughts took place naturally whenever such calamities come people will migrate to the new areas once they migrated they cannot take the city area but they continued the culture they took to the new areas their culture but not the urban elements because urbanization requires uh, different technological advancement in this area all the conditions which required for the urban areas fulfilled but once you move to the new area their agriculture practices are different their domestication of animal practices are different artisan activities are different but the, here these conditions are already set that's why it led to the emergence of urbanization but once you go there only you can take the ideas that's why mother goddess some kind of script pottery all those elements entered into new cultures they use this metal copper but even they don't know how to use bronze also that's why these late harappans became chalcolithic sites but when it comes to harappan this was a bronze after late harappan that's why before harappan also copper used after harappan also copper used but urban areas emerged in between these chalcolithic settlements are these settlements do you know what is the southern most harappan site in india in this location there is a place called daimabad daimabad is considered as the southern most point it is having the characteristics of these harappan elements like some usage of bronze some urban elements 
how these came means they have taken their ideas and technology to this particular place this is how our evolution goes on now you see the institutions prehistory proto history and historic period in our historic time period means written scripts are there metal usage full social institutions full economic institutions all these whatever we are seeing today modern form of life all those institutions emerged in historic time period when it comes to prehistory just beginning proto history is the transition period between pre and proto these are the subsistence now we have compared how human evolution taking place from lower paleolithic this is the time period climate is changing accordingly plants and animals also change technology also changed accordingly their subsistence pattern also hunting gathering gradually it led to this agriculture practices houses also they started making art mesolithic neolithic chalcolithic you add one more thing technology society religion art you include one element that is houses wattle and doab when it comes to mesolithic caves less wattle and daub this is they used these leaves leaves and poles leaves and poles wattle and daub in neolithic wattle and daub mud bricks also they used and in some place like burjhom pit dwellings pits pit dwellings and when it comes to chalcolithic this wattle and daub continued then mud bricks continued in some place burnt bricks also because of these burnt bricks only harappans could use these burnt bricks for urban areas this is how housing pattern also changed and this how the human evolution is continuing and today so many settlements chalcolithic and when it comes to harappan urban areas again after harappan also chalcolithic then when it comes to the timeline paleo meso neo chalcolithic harappan they forgotten the urban elements bronze once again it became like this one now you see this chalcolithic when vedic people comes again they start from the life from agriculture even before that pastoralism domestication of animals then gradually in later vedic time period agriculture then kingdoms empires emerged this is how our society evolves in each and every time period we are going to deal with the, these dimensions only our questions are also asked in the same dimensions if it is completely about mesolithic means all the dimensions if it is a particular gupta time period they may ask art of gupta time period economy of gupta political system of gupta time period likewise these are the institutions tomorrow i will give you the proper model answer i will dictate so that you will have reference as of now you understood how these systems are evolving but how you are going to write in the mains examination that is going to be important one with some evidence in 150 words 200 words how you are going to present that is also matter
Sanju, all right, up to here. Okay then, you read uh, NCRT, Sanju, you read NCRT, R.S. Sharma. Hmm. Okay, then you, tomorrow if you have any doubts, you ask me in the class. I will explain it. All right, see you tomorrow then.